Employees of the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute, glaciologist Gleb and hydrometeorologist Olga live in Spitsbergen all year round. There is a scientific base here. And in season, that is, early spring or autumn, they make such trips across the bay every week. But now, in June, they usually don't go to glaciers. This can be dangerous. Well, shall we go to the glacier now? But crossing the bay is just the beginning of our journey. Now we have a long, long way to go on this stone valley. Some kind of a bone. What's this? The deer has lost it. Which looks more like a desert. And it's called moraine. There used to be a glacier here. When it moves slowly, it abrades the source rock from its sustrate to create the moraine. That is, it grinds it. Yes, this mountain, these rocks into such pebbles. Here, you see, these are the same rocks, only in this form. These 600-meter cliffs, that's what the glacier has broken on its way. It broke them down and then retreated. The glacier used to descend to the sea. Once upon a time, all this was one big glacier. The Aldegonda Glacier, our point of destination, has always been small, but lately it has been catastrophically decreasing. That's a degrading glacier. Degrading? What does that mean? It means that it's dying. That's all. One day it will disappear. Since the 80s, it has gone almost a mile away. Last year, 7 million cubic meters of water melted. If you count in the fabled Olympic pools... Let's jump! Oh, thank you! Then you could fill almost 3,000 such pools with this water. The water is really everywhere. This is even though the season of ablation, that is, summer melting, has not yet come. And yet, two hours later, we finally step on the snow. That is the glacier itself. Have we just set foot on the glacier? Yes, yes, we have. Guys, we are on a glacier in the Arctic. This part of the glacier is called the Tongue. Because if you look at a picture taken from space, it does look like a real tongue. The Tongue gets 30 centimeters smaller every year. That's why scientists have installed a special 6-meter rake here. 32 centimeters and a half. Mm -hmm. Last year, we finished the measurements on 38. The math is simple. There are five and a half centimeters of superimposed ice here now. Superimposed ice is the surface layer of the glacier, snow that has fallen during the winter and turned into ice. If there are more centimeters here now than it was before, why do you say that the glacier melts and in principle is dying? We can see growth here. It will all melt in the summer. Well, right now in the summer, the guys came from there, and they said that there is no snow even there. Glaciologist Ivan Lavrentiev spends most of his time in the Arctic Circle, and he has regularly visited Svalbard for the last 16 years. Is this you? It's me. In this footage from the personal archive, you can see how the glaciers look in the winter and how glacier studies actually look. Now scientists are drilling a well for a thermoset, a long wire with temperature sensors. The glaciers of Svalbard turned out to be polythermic, that is, two-layered. About 150 meters of ice, of which the upper 25-30 meters are polar, and then there is temperate ice. In general, studies show that glaciers are much more dynamic and less resistant to climate change. And this is another research. A sledge with locator is tied to snowmobiles. Thus, scientists have made 500 kilometers of profiles with 200 meters intervals and, with the help of radar sounding, has recently obtained the thickness of all ice on Svalbard and thus the amount of fresh water in this archipelago. And yet, what happens if, perish the thought, but that seems to be the way things are going, all the Svalbard ice melts? Well, I can give you a very rough idea. There are some three centimeters of water here. The level of the world ocean can rise that high. 
But if you imagine that much spread over the area of the world's ocean, then this is quite a lot. And not only glaciers melt. The Grenfjord Strait used to freeze in winter, and now it looks like this all year round. According to scientists, the temperature in the Arctic is steadily increasing, and since the 1970s, it has already increased by an average of three degrees. And that is a huge amount for glacier, as well as for sea ice. All members of the Arctic expeditions can see even from the ships that the amount of ice in the Arctic Ocean is growing smaller, and the larger area is covered with open water, the more the atmosphere is heated, causing even more melting. In September 2012, the summer minimum, which was predicted only by the end of the 21st century, has already passed. The area of sea ice has decreased more than twice, from 8 to 3.6 million square kilometers. And all the data received today show one thing. Soon, this house of polar bears, sea ice, will simply disappear. Here, as a matter of fact, you can see the model of ice changes in September for approximately about 100 years. And we can see the moment when there is no ice in the summer. And according to this model, this moment is somewhere here about 2070. Can you believe it? The Arctic without snow and ice? No, but this is it. Here on the glacier, these forecasts are hard to believe. Gleb, well, is it always so frightening? No, usually we use a coring tool. Yeah, that is, we are lucky. Here's a glacier for you. Is this glacier ice? Yes. But it turns out that the ice itself can tell a lot about what is happening to it. Alexei? Hello. Hello, it's quite cold here in your workplace. Sure, but it's good for ice. Alexei Ikekin is used to cold weather himself. He frequents beyond the polar circle, but on the other pole, on the south one. This is ice core from Antarctica. From Antarctica? An ice sample, yes, which is obtained as a result of drilling a glacier. Unlike the Arctic, Antarctica does not melt, yet it even grows two centimeters a year. In 2012, scientists drilled to the subglacial Lake Vostok here, but the work was aimed not only at the lake itself, but also at the ice that was on the way to the lake at a depth of more than three kilometers. What is the age of this ice? Well, this one is about 400,000 years old. Listen, well, may I touch this beauty? Well, of course. 400,000. Just be careful. Years old. Watch out. This piece of ice is, yes? Yes. But why do you need them? To understand what is happening now and what will happen in the future, one must study the climates of the past. One of these methods is just to drill the glaciers and study these ice cores. Ice accumulates gradually and forms layers. And like the tree rings, they provide information about the world in which they grew. Water consists of different types of molecules, light and heavy. They are all stable, and the concentration of the heavy isotopes of water, in fact, tells us about the air temperature in the past. To begin to extract information from this icy memory card, scientists first cut the core into small sample pieces. They will work with them. It looks like ice cubes for drinks. Well, of course, yes, because it's ice. It really is. But in fact, it is quite unusual, and we are going to find out now. For the first time in 400,000 years, this ice will be brought in the warm. First of all, you need to melt the samples. Well, Anna, look, our ice is almost melted. Now your work begins. Yes, let's analyze the isotopic signature of our water. And for this, we need to pour the samples into small test tubes. With which you will continue to work? Yes. This work requires only 900 nanoliters, just a couple of drops of this amazing water from the past. And now we carry our samples to the device. This device, a water isotopic signature analyzer, takes samples, then evaporates the water, and then uses a laser to analyze what kind of molecules were inside. 
First, the isotopic signature depends on the temperature difference between the start and the end points of the air mass trajectory. When the cloud flies from the ocean to central Antarctica. Uh -huh. And the lower the temperature is, the more the difference is, the faster the heavy molecules fall out of the cloud. Amount of deuterium, the heavy isotope of hydrogen, in precipitation increases under warming. Thus, knowing the age of the original ice, scientists can find out what the temperature was then. Here we see the concentration of deuterium compared to seawater and here of oxygen-18. This ice has formed during the cold period and if we compare it with another sample that corresponds to a warm period, and which is 350,000 years, then we see the difference in the isotopic composition of both deuterium and oxygen-18. And this difference of several dozen of promils in deuterium corresponds to the several degrees Celsius difference in air temperature. This is how the exact time frame of the climate cycles of the planet was established in this laboratory. But according to these calculations, the current warming has already had to end several thousand years ago, and it is only gaining momentum. And the answer, why, is also in the ice. In these air bubbles, there are greenhouse gases over the last 800,000 years. And for this substantial period, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere has varied from 180 to 300 ppm. That is, to be precise, Changes in the concentration of greenhouse gas has occurred within these limits. And over the last hundred years, this concentration has increased to 380 ppm, if I'm not mistaken, in 2005, and is now more than 400 ppm. It is the core from Lake Vostok, obtained by Vladimir Lipinkov, that for the first time proved the direct relationship between warming and the amount of carbon dioxide, and that for the last hundred years, it is affected not by the orbit and the axis of the planet, but by man. Even if we stop all the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere right now, the process is running, and it takes the system a long time to react. That is, the warming will continue. Meanwhile, despite the summer, the Aldegonda Glacier is still covered with snow. And today, because of the snow, we cannot rise above the tongue. There's a well there, and now it's covered with a thin layer of snow. You can just go like this, and then, and that's all, you fall there. And the man is no more. There will be more and more wells and crevices here, and once named Elagonda after the brave Portuguese princess that had sailed to distant Spurzbergen, the glacier has lived for millions of years. But like the princess, who is no longer alive, soon can disappear too. Well, that is, after all, the glacier is not a dead desert, but a whole living organism. Of course, it breathes, lives, it is born, it dies, and it can come alive again. But will it? The Arctic is a very strange place. I did not get infected with it, but it has certainly left an impression on me. You feel like a tourist here. Moreover, in more ways than one. First, there are really lots of tourists here. 140,000 people come here every year because it's much easier to get here now. But secondly, this land itself shows you that it is impossible to live here permanently. There is no place for man in the middle of the ice. Here, you feel small and insignificant like nowhere else. After all, this landscape has not changed for millions of years. But the most bitter thing is that it can change beyond recognition in the next five decades. Because in the 21st century, not in ice is the hostile environment, but men.